So this is like uh, the last video that I'm going to record for chapters three and four for the book. So what I want to talk about now is all this garchi stuff. Rather than, you know, the rather than start going into the details of all this garchi and how to estimate it and all that, this is like a nightmare, it's like a Pandora can, right? We're going to do something else. I'm just going to show you that garchi is actually a very natural extension of what we guys are always doing, right? So say we are having returns, right? R1, yada, yada, yada to RT, right? And let's say that RT is actually normally distributed, right? And this is a stationary process, okay? Now, the important thing here is that RT, the average is the expected value of this RT, right? Of this stock, let's say, or, or S&P is zero, okay? Now, so you can think about, you know, if you don't think about, if you don't want to think about the RT, you can always think about, you know, the stock, right? versus the uh, S&P, right? So alpha equals zero, right? So you can actually create a portfolio of stock minus beta times the S&P, and then you can, you know, and then the return of this portfolio is going to satisfy something like that, right? Because there is going to be no alpha according to the CAPM theory, okay? Now, how do I measure volatility of some, something like that? Watch carefully, right? The variance of this baby is going to be what? It's going to be, because you don't, because the expected value is zero, it's going to be basically R1 square plus R2 square plus yada, 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 RT square divided by, let's say that uh, this T, we are going to ma make it name N, and this is going to divide by what? By N, okay? So what do we get here? This is actually extremely interesting. This is going to, we can think about this, right? as a model of a variance, but we have like a return square, but the weight of this return, right, is going to be n. So we can think about, you know, the variance at time t as follows. We can think that this is going to be alpha one times, eps, you know, r one square plus alpha two times r two square plus alpha three times R3 square plus yada, 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 alpha n times Rn square, right? Where alpha i's here are equals one over n. Now, what is garch? Well, the first thing that you want to fix here, right, is what kind of r's you're taking, right? So here, what is n? What is the number of legs? Because whether we like it or not, right, volatility is actually depending on time, right? We saw the graph of the volatility of the returns that we have, you know, this spike in, in the, during the crisis. And if you look, for example, on the volatility of the oil now, you will see those, this kind of spike as well, okay? Because oil is, has been dropping and volatility is, is going up, okay? You, what you want to say, okay, how do I estimate you know, how much I need to get to go, because if I'm going to go too, too, too far, I may go into those kind of, you know, into those kind of uh, things, right? Into those kind of peaks. So volatility, right? In this particular case, if you take it for 10 years, right? If you take us, if you, if you measure N equals 3,600, let's say 10 years, or N equals 30, which is just 30, 30 days, right? Let's say it's a daily measurement, you are going to get different results, okay? So, the first thing you want to do, right? You want to say that y if you have a garch, you want to say that you have P, right? Where P basically tells you what is a, how many returns you want to get, right? Now, the only thing here, right? So the, the, the usual way to measure volatility, right? Is basically saying, oh my God, right? In the usual way to measure volatility, this weight equals to one over n. But I can take any weights, any weight on, uh, I want. So then, what I'm going to get is that my sigma t square, right, which is basically the volatility of this arise, right. So I'm going to basically say that this is going to be alpha one times epsilon one square plus alpha two plus epsilon two square plus alpha three times epsilon three square plus yada, 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 alpha n times epsilon n square, 
right? But now I'm going to say that I'm going to re remove this, right? And I'm going to put t minus q. So if I'm now going to take, right, alpha i equals 1 over n. So let's say that the alpha, you know, that n is going to be 30. So then this model is going to be 1 over 30 times epsilon uh, 30 square plus, let's say, epsilon 1 square or whatever, plus epsilon 2 square plus yada, 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 epsilon 30 square. Congratulations. You have your Garch model. Okay? It's a very simplified Garch model where your, you know, where your guys are actually equally weighted, but then again, it's a Garch model. It's a legitimate Garch model. There is no doubt about it. Okay? The more general Garch models are obtained if you take those guys and you start, you know, playing with them. So, for example, you know, uh, you're actually saying, you know, alpha 1, you know, if it's closer, then alpha 1 is higher. And if it's less, then alpha 1 is lower. Then it's lower. So, for example, alpha 1 for 1 is going to be half. Alpha 3, let's say, is going to be 1 third. Alpha 2 is going, alpha 4 is going to be 1 over 4, right? So, then you are actually getting a volatility which is measured like weighted average, right? So, in order to estimate the volatility today, you're taking half of the, you know, of the return yesterday, half of the return, let's say, a day before and quarter, etc., etc., etc. That's a ba that's basically a legitimate Gauss model, okay? But with different weights than the one over n weights which we have usually. Now, one more thing that you want to know, right? That if you look on the on the uh, on the formula for volatility, you will discover that the volatility at time t, right, equals to what? Equals to volatility at time let's say, equals to volatility of t in time t minus 1 plus, right, 1 over n times, uh, you know, plus your volatility plus your return at time t, right? And you have, you can divide it by 1 over n. So what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, thing this gives you, right? This gives you basically the following model. It will be sigma t square equals to alpha 1, right? times sigma t minus 1 square plus alpha plus let's say well, well let's not uh, say but let's say beta right times r t minus 1 that's it that's another Garch model right but because you have not only the the return square but you can also have the volatilities right this is called basically Garch pq right so how how the general guy is going to look like well it's easy, actually easy peasy now I understand that you, you understand how it looks like, right? It's actually alpha 1 times sigma, one, uh, sigma t minus q square plus alpha 2 times sigma t minus q minus 1 square, right? Plus yada, 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 alpha q, let's say, sigma t minus 1. And then plus the returns. So you have beta, beta 1 times r t minus 1 square plus beta 2 times rt minus 2 square, yada, 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 beta q times rt minus q square. That's it, you're done. Okay, that's your Garch model. That's all there is to it. Okay? So the Garches, right, the main message of this video, right, I, I could go on and on and on and on, but the main message of this video, right, that the Garches are actually a natural generalization of the things that you're going all, that you're doing all the time. All you do here, right, you start playing with, with this weight schema. That's it. Okay? If you take risk matrix, for example, then alpha equals 0 0.94. This is 0 0.94 square, etc., etc., etc. So you're basically, you know, doing uh, different weight schemas. And the, you know, and the thing about it is that you want to estimate these alpha i's as good as possible. Now, this is a, actually a real challenge. Now, why do we do that? Why, why, do we, why do we even care about this? Why do we need to go through all this madness? Okay, so once again, remember what I told you, right? That value at risk, okay, depends on your volatility. How much money you can lose, the, the probability of how much money you can lose, right? Your value at risk depends on your volatility, all right? So, if your volatility have a better estimate, you can actually improve your risk, you know, your risk profile. You can actually see how your risk profile is going to actually, you know, uh, be improved. 
Okay? So in this particular case, if you know sigma t square, right, with, for, with this kind of crazy estimates, if you know sigma t square, then you know it is, you, you have a much better grasp on the value at risk of your portfolio. Okay? So that's the main crux of it. You have to understand, right, that the main crux is that you, you know you have the value at risk. And the value at risk is, is depending on volatility. And because, you know, volatility is changing based on time, people want to know, okay, whether can we estimate the volatility better than just taking a simple average of how we make or how we are making it before, right? Now, there are also other, you know, there are also other uh, interesting model of volatility, something called like Heston model, that people do not use in risk management, but they do use in options, okay? And the option market is actually gives you a forward-looking volatility. So another idea that you may want to entertain, right, is if you have a portfolio, of, let's say, of stocks, of S&P, right, you may want maybe to estimate volatility based on the options market rather than doing all these gauge models. But we can maybe talk about this in class. All right? Thank you very much and have a great day. And, uh, you know, I hope to see you tomorrow. And I'm actually looking forward to the discussion. And, you know, hopefully, you know, this video makes it easier for you to prepare for the test. Okay? Thank you very much. Bye.